The purpose of the gelatin liquefaction test is to determine the ability of bacteria to produce gelatinase that digest liquefied gelatin. And so we inoculate our uh, test tubes, we place them in the incubator, and then once the test tubes are inoculated with the bacteria and they're incubated, it will cause the gelatin to melt. In order to determine whether or not the reaction has taken place, the incubated tubes must be placed on ice. And they're placed on ice uh, until uh, they've, for about five minutes, and until a control sample would solidify. Now, a positive test would indicate that the, the gelatin is still liquefied, where a negative test, it has solidified. Here we have mannitol salt auger. It's both selective and differential. Uh, mannitol salt helps to determine two characteristics of bacteria, whether they are salt tolerant or not, and whether they are able to ferment mannitol. Uh, when we look at this, this would be very uh, helpful in identification of Staphylococcus type of bacteria, especially if it's in a mixed flora of bacteria. The high salt concentration, which is about 7.5%, inhibits most gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria from growing, except for the Staphylococcus species. So this is a nice test to help identify various Staphylococcal bacteria. And when we look at it, what we'll notice is if we have growth, then we know that it handles the high salt content. And if there's no growth, it does not handle the high salt content. And then the next thing we look at is, does it ferment mannitol? And if we see a color change in the overall color of the auger, then we know that it uh, ferments mannitol. So here this yellow change indicates that we have mannitol fermentation going on, where here we have no color change. Here we have the mannitol salt um, dish again, and you'll notice that on this side we have growth, so it can handle high salt content. This side there's no growth, so it cannot handle the high salt. And this right here, you'll notice that with the growth we have no discoloration, no change in color of the auger. Therefore, this does not ferment mannitol. The indol test is used to identify bacteria capable of producing indol. Uh, when reading the test, COVAX solution must be added to the inoculated tubes. If we have a red layer formed, then it indicates indol is present, and this is a positive test. If we have no red layer, this indicates a negative test. The SIM test performs three different tests motility, indol, and sulfur reduction. Motility and indol have been mentioned earlier. Sulfur reduction. This test is used to identify those bacteria capable of reducing sulfur. If we have a black precipitant that's formed, it indicates a positive test for sulfur production, where um, no precipitant and no color change indicates a negative test. One should not run a SIM test and an individual indol test or an individual motility test as they will be running repeating tests. The IMVIC tests are a group of individual tests used in micro, uh, microbiology labs to test and identify an organism in the coliform group. Uh, coliform bacteria are gram-negative, aerobic, uh, some of them can be facultative uh, aerobes, uh, but typically, the presence of a coliform would indicate a fecal contamination. So the four tests that INVIC uh, tests for are indol, methyl red, the Vogue's proskacker, and the citrate test. When uh, running the methyl red test and the Vogue's Pro proskacker test, the test tubes... Um, both use the same broth for the bacteria growth. The broth is called the MRVP broth. 
and after growth the broth is separated into two different test tubes. One test tube will be used for the methyl red test and one test tube will be used for the VP test. With the methyl red test the pH indicator is methyl red and it is added to one tube and a red color will appear at a pH lower than 4.2 and that will indicate a positive test. If the test tube remains yellow, that will indicate a negative test. With the VP test, two reagents must be added to the test tube. The first reagent is called Barrett's A, which is alpha naphthol. The second reagent is called Barrett's B, which is potassium hydroxide. When these reagents are added to the broth, a pink burgundy color would indicate a positive test. This color change can take up to 20 minutes to develop and E. coli does not produce the acetylmethyl uh, carbonyl that would react and so um, an E. coli would show a negative test. So here we would have what a negative test looks like and right over here we would have a positive test for VP. The Simmons citrate test is used to determine the ability of a microorganism to use citrate as its sole carbon energy source. And so when looking at these test tubes, our test tubes before inoculation will appear green after inoculation, if we have a positive test, it will appear blue, and a negative test shows no color change, remaining green. So again, here we have a blue color change, so we have positive. Here we have it remaining green, so we have a negative test. When running a triple sugar iron auger, the tube is inoculated by stabbing into the auger butt, which is the bottom of the test tube. Uh, and we use an inoculating loop or inoculating wire, and then it's streaked um, through the slant. So we'll stab down and then we'll streak up through that slant in a wave-like pattern. Uh, we wait and we read the results at 18 to 24 hours after um, inoculation. Uh, when there is a yellow butt and a red slant, uh, this indicates that the organism can ferment glucose. And this change in color from this red to yellow is due to the change in pH as the lactic acid is produced. So the pH indicator used for triple sugar iron auger is phenol red. Starch auger is basically an all-purpose medium. Uh, the plate of this medium has a single streak or spot inoculation. So here we have the entire plate and we'll do a streak uh, of uh, inoculation of the bacteria. It is then incubated for one to two days and then it is removed from the uh, incubator. We then will take iodine and we will flood the uh, growth area with iodine. Now the iodine reacts with starch to form a dark blue complex. Any clear area around the growth indicates the, uh, the breakdown of the starch by the organism. And this is due to the production of amylase, which is an extracellular enzyme. So when looking at our starch auger amylase test, this blue coloration here shows that um, starch is still present and therefore this is a negative test. This clear area shows that the bacteria has broken the starch down, starch is no longer present, and so we have a positive test for amylase. Skim milk auger is used to detect the presence of caseinase, an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of casein into individual amino acids. 
Now this right here shows no breakdown, so this is what a negative skim milk auger test would look like. Now here on this particular uh, petri dish, the bacteria has produced the caseinase, and we have a result right along there of the breakdown of the casein on either side of the bacteria growth. So this is seen as this clear zone area, and this would be a positive test for caseinase on skim milk agar. Catalase is an enzyme that converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. The presence of catalase can be easily detected by a slide method. And this right here is just a normal microscope slide. A drop of 3% hydrogen peroxide is put on the slide right in this area and then the bacteria is emulsified in the drop. The presence of the bubbles right here will indicate the evidence of oxygen production or a positive test. The absence of bubbles would indicate negative for catalase. Finally, um, as you prepare for your microbiology lab practical, review over the handout that you received that showed you the test questions to study. Um, go through, make sure you understand the procedure for each of these uh, lab techniques that we've discussed. Understand um, what the reagents are, what they test for, what a positive test and what a negative test looks like. Write down any questions that you have and uh, bring that list to class so that I can clarify any concerns you have before the lab practical. Good luck and have a wonderful day. I'll see you in class.